PTSD from this show. <laughs> what is going on? Is everything okay, Gary? Are you all right? Yes, I'm, I'm fine. Oh, oh, here. Oh, look, no, I don't know you're this should be better now that it now I now I can stop now having yelling stop at me. So there's that. <sighs> okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Comes Out Loud 708. It's a birthday show. Because you Happy know. birthday. Def gets another year older and grayer as the years go by. Two days to be well. Okay. And I suppose that some people, when they hear the audio version, yeah, it'll be my birthday. That's very true. It'll be so Tuesday. True. It'll be Tuesday. So, yeah, we've already made it a whole revolution around the sun yet once again. Um, and this time we have a theme. And this is going to take a moment, but if you go on the journey, I think you'll understand. I, I'm, hmm, I'm not sure how I want to like. Should I, should I brace myself? Should I like get into like, <laughs> like fetal positions? And what how, how convenient is it? <laughs> so convenient, like the most convenient ever. Okay. Uh, yeah, so as Jeff was alluding to, because this show is never not without dad puns, especially when it comes to the birthday episode for a certain producer, uh, we're going to make a pit stop at a local convenience store for some snacks and drinks. Because what else would you want on your birthday? But, you know, snacks and drinks, of course. Yay. Um, there might be some debates about the items that um, we can enjoy, but... Uh, First, we're going to discuss a little history about a well-known international business. So uh, there's a reason why it's called the 7-Eleven edition, because we're going to talk a little bit about the 7-Eleven convenience store chain. Mm. Which I used to have one less than a block away. It's funny that oh, you should close. say that, Jeff, because do you know where they're headquartered? And don't cheat looking at the dock. <laughs> I don't even have the dock open. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here. Um, I'm going to guess, uh, let's see, my first, from the way you said it, was going to be Austin, but maybe in Minnesota? You were closer with your first guess. Okay. Irving, Texas. Ah. Which, which I believe is closer to Dallas. Well, yeah, I just realized I have no idea where Irving, Texas is. Like, I've heard of it, but... I'm not familiar with it, so I'm going to take a quick look. Uh, Irving is northwest of Dallas. He told you. Northeast of Fort Worth, so it's kind of in the DFW area. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's where it's at. Okay. Not good to know that. TV show. Uh, no, not it is not that. Um, but what's interesting is that it's owned by Japanese 7NI Holdings through the 7-Eleven Japanese Company Limited. So while it was originated in the U.S. in 1927, it actually is an international uh, holding company. But there's some, there's some little factoid things here about the history that I found pretty interesting. Um, and they started as an ice house storefront. So people would actually go there to get their ice uh, for their ice boxes. For those of you that are not old enough to know what an ice box is, there's a great thing called the internet and Wikipedia. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm being a little snarky. Um, <laughs> let's just say before electricity became as prevalent as it is, we had to figure out other ways to maintain uh, our food. But so these Texas roots run deep. Uh, and their 100th anniversary isn't far off because they started in 1927. Mm. So in just a couple of years, there's probably going to be a big media blitz for the, celebrating their 100th. Um, for the first 20 years, they were known as totem stores. That's T-O-T-E apostrophe M. Good to know. Any ideas why they would be called a totem store? I, I, I don't know because 
I'm going to lie and say I didn't see it on the dock. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because they had a lot of stuff in them? Help them? Um, not exactly. So the idea was because customers toted away their purchases. Mm -hmm. oh. So you went to the totem store to cool. get your wares and then take them home. So them. A version yeah. of like pre calling them convenience stores. Correct. Change of nomenclature. Yes. Uh, and then the seven to 11 name change came in the 1940s and was used to reflect their new extended hours, which were from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. <laughs> all week long. It's all a little typo there, honey. <laughs> I got I fixed it. Calm down. <laughs> and the current logo, which I'm not going to put up for copyright reasons at the moment, <laughs> um, includes the change in 1968 to utilize a lowercase n at the end of the word 11. So when you look at it, it's got a big number seven, and then the text of the word 11 comes through the middle of the seven, kind of like a crosshash, but it's capital E-L-E-V-E, -E, and then it has a large lowercase n. And apparently the president at the time, or CEO, I believe she was a woman, said she thought it gave it a little bit more of a grace uh, in terms of the logo. It didn't look so harsh with all caps. Hmm. And it's pretty much been that way ever since. Interesting. Yeah. I'm looking at the logo now and I'm like, yeah, I, I'll be honest. I never noticed that it was a lowercase n. I, I'm just going to. Yeah, own that. I will own that. No, I agree. I, I didn't know that either. That's why I thought it was an interesting factoid. Look at that. So 7-Eleven operates, franchises, and licenses over 78,000 stores in 19 countries and territories. And this was as of November of 21. So a little bit uh, over a year ago, almost like two years ago. Right. Um. But did you know that they have multiple names? So they're not just 7-Elevens. I'm not surprised. I, I, I don't, I won't say I, it, I knew that. I feel like it had to have had different names depending on where it was. Mm -hmm. So that would be my like caveat to it. I thought it was very interesting uh, to find out that they had these different names of the other companies. One of them I am familiar with because it is up in our region, Damon, um, mm -hmm. not, not in my state necessarily. Uh, so in the national spotlight, they're pretty much known as 7-Elevens, but they're not necessarily everywhere in some regions. They may also be known as a speedway. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. That I know. Yeah. Mostly through the Midwest and the East Coast. Uh, and then they're also known as something I've never seen before called stripes. Which is, I guess, in the south central portion of the U.S. Hmm. That one I didn't. South, the south central portion of the U.S. I haven't seen stripes around here. Yeah, so uh, let me go to here, and I'll do this real quick. It feels right kind here. of like that Hardee's Carl's Jr. sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to share here for a moment uh, what the logos look like, because this is from their corporate website. I thought this was pretty cool. It's a little fountain kind of like machine deal, and then they have the three different logos side by side, like their flavors of the brand. Interesting. Yeah, I've never seen strikes before. I know Speedway. God damn it. <laughs> what? I was trying to that Damon put come join us as we as we're live to celebrate Jim's birthday. And I'm like, it's Jim's birthday too. <laughs> Fucking like I I I do my little swipey 
texting thing and I thought I put Jeff and I was seeing I just saw the J and I kept going and whatever. Anyway, it's edited now and now it says Jeff. <laughs> Jen's birthday is not until January. Nice. But yeah, as I was saying, um, again, I've never seen I've never seen strikes before. I, I, I have really... seen Speedway. When I was living in Minnesota, there was, there was yeah. Speedway. Okay. Speedway is what I'm familiar, very familiar with. I didn't know that they were the same brand, though. That's I the... I didn't know that either. Like, I see spe- a lot of Speedways in my driving travels. Um, not necessarily here in PA, and that's probably because we have our own dueling rivalry convenience stores locally. <laughs> but, yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, so with that said, there's some questions to consider. And this is because the birthday boy had requested previously this concept of having some questions asked and a discussion. So I'll be very curious to see how this goes. I'm ready. I, I know. I don't have the doc open. I'm surprised about everything here. I'm just playing guest today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um so in in the style of certain uh podcasts and other shows these questions are meant to evoke uh discussion um possibly some strong feelings hopefully no one gets butt hurt uh not in a good way anyway not yeah, in yeah, i was gonna say you should probably use some lube first but anyways <laughs> thank goodness our podcast and posting is all 18 plus <laughs> so we don't get it not for that um, but 7-Eleven, we'll start with this one. 7-Eleven is known for selling Slurpees and coming out with unique flavors of Slurpees. Um, and for those that don't know, a Slurpee is a, uh, very cold semi-liquid beverage. I'll put it that way at the moment. Um, that a lot of people probably think of, like, if they ever know what an icy is. Mm, that's true. Um, as an example of unique flavors, like this year they had a Sprite Limonade, a Summertime Citrus, and a Fanta Dragon Fruit Zero Sugar. Mm. Several years ago, they came out with a Captain Crunch Slurpee flavor. I see David. <laughs> David's making a face again. Cisco's not having it. I don't, I don't, did you say, Cap, did you say, did you say Captain Crunch or did you say Crunch Berries? Uh, it was, well, I think it was, yeah, it was Captain Crunch. Yeah, I don't, okay. I don't remember if it had the, the, no, it had to have, no, it didn't have the Crunch Berries. Here's the reason why I know this, because they released it and I was so heck bent on trying this thing out. I happened to be in Pittsburgh when the flavor was like out for like two or three weeks or a month. And I intentionally searched for a local 7-Eleven while I was down there just so I could go in and try it. And I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's worth like, I, I kind of wish that it was like a nice little small one where you could just like have a taste. But if you know anything about 7-Elevens, small, not what they're known for. No. <laughs> I gave it. No. Didn't mean to have you do a spit take. Um, this wasn't about size, but um, yeah, they that's how we originated and got the thing called the big gulp. Yep. So um, yeah, but anyways, no, I did try it. Um, I was shocked that it tasted exactly like the cereal, like alarmingly so, because I had someone else try it um who happened to live in the area and they were beside themselves they were like that is not natural that is like some satan like magic and like <laughs> really smooth <laughs> see i don't really remember the flavor of captain crunch because the cereal in and of itself is it, just like shards of shardy shard just and, and, and like rocks i mean it is the worst it's it's a danger to the roof of your mouth I love I, I, all right i love your entire Crunch. mouth to begin with it makes your mouth bleed oh no, no. it's it's 
awful. So I, like I never it. really had it. I was like, mm -mm. I love Captain Keep that away. That was my favorite, one of my favorite cereals. Captain Crunch, Captain Crunch, Crunch Berries were two of my favorites. And I didn't have that. Or, I mean, maybe it was, and that's why my mouth is the way it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Resilient? <laughs> mm, there we go. There's the positive spin. There we go. Okay, I was going to say full of scars, but, you know, just, just sure. hard tissue. <laughs> Although that sounds pretty severe. No, anyway, Gary, the question was... is. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. Was it was it good? You had I, it. So I, was I, it good? I, I honestly like I drank the whole thing, but I was just really kind of spooked by how well it tasted. Well, look who joined hey. us. Hi, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the settings. <laughs> no, I totally understand that. Oh. So I guess the first question is, Charles, can you hear us? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. They're just trying to get their setup ready, which I totally understand. What is all this other stuff? Oh, that's that. Okay. Like I said, everything keeps yelling at me. I'm not used to this setup. No, you're not used to things yelling at you? Well, you know. No, actually not. <laughs> Things usually go just fine, and I don't need them to be yelling at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're good at what you do and you know what you're doing, they don't have to say anything. Yeah. So, they except, uh, they still yeah. say something. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you gag them. Yeah, that part too. Yeah. Well, no, well, but then we still have some. Oh, yes, we can. Yay. Hey, Charles. Hey. Uh, so to catch Charles up real quick, uh, we are having obviously Jeff's birthday celebration, but it's the 7 Eleven edition. As weird as this is gonna sound, it's all based off of a theme of the convenience store. Um, and we're gonna we're having some questions for discussion. Um, so we were talking about Slurpees because that's what 7 Eleven is known for. Mm -hmm. Um, but the question is. Is Slurpee a beverage or a dessert? Ooh. Beverage. Ooh. It is oh, a beverage. It's hot dog. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's a beverage. I don't think of it as a dessert. I feel dessert like implies more of something you eat versus drink. Well, not necessarily. Okay, so would you consider a milkshake, a beverage, or a dessert? That that's a beverage. That's a dessert, and which is why I, where I'm going with it on this is where <laughs> okay. I feel that um, <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. Certain Slurpees can be considered desserts, and certain Slurpees can be considered beverages. For example, a Coca-Cola flavored Slurpee are a, those kind of like soda flavored um, Slurpees I would consider beverages. But this Crunchberry shit that you just talked about, uh, um, the um, something that has a more like desserty kind of theme to it, I would consider more dessert. Like if they had a, although I, God, I hope they don't, but like a chocolate Slurpee or something along those lines, that to me falls into dessert category. I'm Haven't not gonna you ever had it chocolate milk. Yes. Which I don't think of as a dessert. And that's where I'm saying to me, chocolate milk, I will say, is a beverage. I'm again countering that is the counter. The chocolate does not control. necessarily make it a dessert then. I but think for a Slurpee. Here, here's 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 this slight thing. You know, taxonomy. The categorization of things. We can say both. Why not both? Both are good. Okay, now let's do this. Where it's where it's it's a type of beverage, but what type of beverage is it's a dessert beverage? Yeah. Like to me. As much as I enjoy the occasional frappuccino on occasion, to me that is a 
I would put that more in dessert than beverage because of literally it is a milkshake. Like, <laughs> yes, you put coffee in it sometimes, but you don't all the time. But to me, that feels more desserty. That feels like milkshake to me, which I consider a dessert. Chocolate milk to me is a beverage blended with like ice cream and and um, our, our syrup and throw whipped cream on it. It is now a dessert. But I, I agree with that because like I've been to steak and shakes and I get mm-hmm. my shake with my, my food and I drink it as a beverage with my food. So it can be both. It, it can be both. It's the it's bisexual of the food world. Yeah. Does it, the dessert really is more of like something that I would put as like a separate part of a meal. Like course, course one is, is or you got salad, soup, main dish, dessert, which usually you have in the end. Not all the time, but usually. So it is still kind of part of the meal in some sense, but when it's something that you have while you're eating the main dish, it's beverage. And and this is like along the line, the Slurpees I think of, of as along the lines of, of just flat out beverage. Some of them could be considered dessert beverages. Some of them can be considered others, depending on the flavor, sure. But Slurpees in general are beverage. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna warn everybody because I don't want you to be triggered, but I found an image and I'm not crazy. This thing did really exist. And I stand corrected. Oh th- David. Okay. It was it is crunch berries. Okay. It crunch it's berries. A, so it's a breakfast item. <laughs> <laughs> so it's breakfast. The dessert is breakfast. God damn it. That just <laughs> That hurts my heart. <laughs> it can't be any worse than the oatmeal I saw that was made with breakfast cereal. Wow. Yeah. No. Mm. Why is it just blue? Oh well. Anyway, just never mind. It's fine. It. It. I still say it's, it's shit. It's a tragedy. <laughs> Because if, it, especially if it tastes like the cereal, if what Gary says is true and it tastes exactly like the cereal, that is possessed. Like, because <laughs> I don't pull out, go get, go get a Slurpee, and like mm, cereal. No, that doesn't. That doesn't work in my brain. <laughs> right. No, that's fair. That's very fair. God bless it. No. Yeah. No. Well, hey, I mean, it could have been instead. Um, let me go to this one. Big now, this this would have been uh, abroad in a different country, but at one time they did have nope. cheesecake. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> David's like, and we're done. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah, the graphic is a, a little bit alarming. Yes, because um, it's radioactive yellow. Well, not only that, but like they literally just have. Do like, they a not know what cheesecake cheese. is? Right. <laughs> like that's not cheesecake they're showing. It's like it's a, a wedge of cheese. Swiss <laughs> with like a graham cracker crust or something. I don't even know that. The, I don't. Mm. I don't. Don't mm-hmm. try, Damon. Don't try. No. No. Nope. But, but again, no. Like that would to me that that falls to that falls into dessert category for me. I'm I'm if I'm gonna have that, that's I'm not having that shit with a meal. Like I'm just, <laughs> like that's not my like first place. That's definitely not my like. Hey, tea. here's my here's my like salad and and ham you know with ham and cheese sandwich and then i'm gonna have it like a cheesecake slurpee like no that doesn't doesn't compute in the brains no I'm trying to yeah. figure out what country that was in based on the sign above it um masa operasi and then probably slurpee oh gosh oh wait let me try this word okay 
Because I mean, I see some what maybe like Korean symbols below. So this has to be somewhere in Asia. That was going to be my guess. Uh, okay, so right, I know that it means giant. Oh, Malay. Oh, Malaysian, Malaysia. Malaysian. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good I was going to guess either there or the Philippines. Yeah. Good to know. But so, to air, go ahead. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> I just thought it was kind of funny that um, there was there was this uh, uniqueness of flavors that have existed. And uh, on our website, we'll have some of the, the factoids and stuff we discussed. Plus, I, I, I'm putting the link for a previously listed, um, back in 2015, over 300 flavors of Slurpee that have existed. And that's like eight years ago. So they've done even 303. more. Wow. wow. And they're not all Mountain Dew. No. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. But yeah. Lord. Lord, That's kind of wild. Okay, by the, so by the way, thank you, Lloyd, for the comment. I'm all about trying to just try having a meal made of just desserts. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I don't know if my pancreas is going to withstand it, and that that was something I was expecting somebody to bring up in the in the discussion about it being a dessert or a beverage, because I'm pretty sure the sugar content at some point will become a factor. Absolutely. Especially with the size. This is our yeah. big. No, so Cisco's impressed by size, duly noted. <laughs> <laughs> Not always driven by size. That part. That's true. That's very true. All right. So next up, convenience stores and truck stops across the U.S. provide hot food options. And some of these are considered the best of like the munchy solutions. So the question becomes, and I'm hoping that the, everybody present knows what these things are, <laughs> okay. or we're going to have to do some descriptions. Do you consider chicken rollers or bacon cheeseburger rollers a food or a monster culinary creation? Your food. Yes. MCC. <laughs> monster <laughs> culinary creation. <laughs> Oh, it's not good food. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it is definitely consumable. I mean, yes, yeah, so we called it a question, but most of the time it's consumable. So I guess it would be food. But if nothing else is open, like, and I am like going into shock because of lack of food for a day or something like that, then maybe. <laughs> but but they also so here's the problem with that that food. They also just have potato chips just in the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> you can literally get prepackaged stuff that tastes way better than what you're getting on those rolls. Oh gosh. The I oh okay. So a few times when I was um visiting family, the hotel I was at, the closest like place within walking distance was a convenience store. I don't think it was a Speedway or, or a 7-Eleven, but they did have the occasional roller food. And when this is, and this was, again, this was a few, several years ago, this was really before the onset of like um, Uber Eats and those kind of things. So you kind of were stuck with like whatever was available. Um, and surprisingly, the Waffle House that was closest to this hotel was closed for some reason. Don't know why. Um, but um, anywho, I know many a time that the late night going to grab like roller somethings, like the the rollers, the chicken rollers, the hamburger rollers, the the buffalo rollers. Um, oh, you're re referring partially to the taquitos. Yes. There, that's the word I was looking for. Like, Tito's or sublime? Yeah. Well, not these. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the Keto's, I will say that you can buy like prepackaged in like a store or a, 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 a um, like a supermarket and heat in your in your oven are f- far better than like the roller like to keto because what happens is depending on how long it's been sitting there which can be a long time the the outside either gets supremely soggy to where it's just like greasy mush or the flip of it is it becomes impossible to eat because it is so fucking hard mm-hmm. but the ketos yes that's that but I, I know many a time that was my like late, late night dinner because I didn't have anything else to eat. Yep. Quick trip. I was just about to say that. Yeah. So Our, here's the thing. Although when, I've never seen a roller that full of items. <laughs> it so, is usually like maybe a that's fair. Lloyd said in the live chat, I'm uh no uh where does it as the, as the non-american i may need a visual on these what these things are so that's what this is for lloyd um lloyd the next time you're in the u.s uh you gotta make a stop probably you have to really go to a truck stop more than um convenience stores because not all convenience stores would have this contraption but it's basically um typically it's just sausages like hot dogs um some kielbasa but not like the large link like all of them are very much in a hot dog format um but mm-hmm. now they have taquitos they have egg rolls mm-hmm. they have like blueberry sausage pancake rolls like yeah basically we're taking food and we're putting it into a phallic tubic like tubal shape we're rolling it around and like heating it through because it's already pre-cooked yes um and then you just go up and you take little tongues and you put it in a little tray or a paper thing or whatever. But it is funny, kind of funny. I agree with the comment that normally it is not this full. I've been, I was doing an image search and we were having this discussion I looking for like someone has definitely uh, one of the store owners or something took this picture because there's no way it's ever been this full. <laughs> this, just, or this was taken at like one in the morning. One in the morning. Well, no, not even then. Like this had to have been taken like four or five in the morning, like like very early. Like they just filled it up, like with everything, and then because yeah, this is, and I mean actually, what worries me is so those little signs you see sticking up on the rollers. Everything behind that is supposed to be just starting to cook. Everything in front of that is supposedly been there long enough to have actually cooked. Right. Mm. There is a lot of things in front of those signs. Yeah. That's why this is full. Yeah. This is I'm... this is the end of the this is the end of the like cycle. Like if these don't get like bought, these are all going in the trash. Like that's that's or <laughs> perhaps or. it's 3 50 going on four o'clock on April 20th. And so there's <laughs> there's a presumption <laughs> time that, for munchies. <laughs> that they're gonna that they're gonna need to be ready. Um so this is what yeah, I think this we're is more normal. To. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> this is more normal. That's right. the roller I know of. Because <laughs> you're like, really? I can't yeah. get two of these. Like I can only get one of the flavor that I want or whatever. It's <laughs> all that's like at the ready. Oh, yeah. Man. That's always the worst one. Like I always whenever I would go to one of these and grab these rollers, it was like I see the two things that I want. That's the first thing I'm getting. I'm beelining it. And and I'm not going to go search for like other food in the store because more than likely if I came back, those would be gone. And I'd be like mad because I wanted that like Polish sausage or that um, um, met with like cheese in it. One of those, those would be the things I would want. Or I'd want the, the random like bacon cheddar, not bacon cheddar, bacon ranch, chicken bacon ranch um, one that I would, that's one of the taquitos that I liked. A few ones that I like. Anyway. Well, it is it is an interesting conversation because I remember vividly a funny story in which I was traveling with very dear friends of mine. Um, one of which has been on the podcast several times, uh, Drew, and the other one, uh, William. And we had this <laughs> late night stop at, I think it was a Speedway. 
and uh, I made a beeline for the roller. And, um, well, let's just say William had quite the reaction <laughs> and was dismayed by the fact that I, like, was perfectly fine and content with eating them. He was like, have you lost your mind? Like, do you not know what's in those things? Like, and I looked at him and I said, I've been eating them for years and I'm still alive. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> you may taste good. Sometimes I do. Like, I will, I will own, I love a good roller, like hot dog or Polish sausage. Like that is, because depending on, again, depending on when it's been sitting, how long it's been sitting there, it's usually pretty well cooked evenly and it gets a nice little crispiness on the on the outside um and that's kind of what i want now the ones you were showing before well hold on oh god what is this the cheeseburger is burger bite it's just a gentleman. It's just a random image I found on the internet. But it does happen to have the 7-Eleven logo and the Buffalo Sabres team in the background. But he's holding up a cheeseburger bite. I think it's from a YouTube video he did. But and I I'm, I can't help but stop for a man who's holding up phallic meat in front of his face with a beard. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> and those were the ones I hated. I hated the ones that were burger. Right? Oh, okay. I, they, they never taste good to me. No. I mean, it's just a burger that's hot dogified. No, a hot dog. It that's not. like the chicken they throw in those rollers now too. They've like smashed together the chicken and and do the same thing. It's like well, I mean, it, it is technically processed chicken. I should have put the air quotes in it. Processed chicken. Wow. No, I don't like that. Anyway. Sorry, David. David's so disturbed by the, <laughs> by the. Um, here, we'll go back to the to the to the smorgasbord view. <laughs> I mean, currently, according to their website, they have the barbecue bacon cheeseburger roller. Yes, which is new. Yeah. So yeah, I they have they they have obviously different flavors, but I just thought it was kind of funny because I was like, this is a divisive issue for some people. They are just not necessarily uh, down with that. The problem is, if I'm in an area where there's actual restaurants that are open late at night, this mm -hmm. is the this is the absolute like the power has to be out everywhere else for me to get these rollers. Aww. I mean, right. it's all about convenience. Doesn't that look yeah, good? Those are, yeah, those are the processed chicken ones that terrify me. They're, they're, they're just so I mean, mean. Honestly, hot dogs should be terrifying too, but that's a whole different subject. I mean, when you think about what's in hot dogs, it is terrifying. Yeah. But when you don't think about it, they're delicious. Yeah, you try your best not to think about it because if you start thinking about it, you you will immediately, if eventually talk yourself out of eating anything. Like I like these, I think are probably the buffalo chicken ones. I'm assuming. I, I think it, I think they're regular buffalo. The one in front is the regular, and the one in the back is the buffalo. Right. Okay. Because just look at at the coloration. You'd be like, oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, spicy, and the other is buffalo. Yeah, I think the ones in the back are meant to be the the cheesy buffalo ranch, and yeah. the ones in the front are the are kind of the the ordinary yeah, really plain. Cheesy. Yeah, which are usually I think Monterey Jack cheese, but mm. anyways, not that I would speak from experience or anything. <laughs> so, yeah, I will just say like they 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 can be uh, satisfying, but yeah, anyways. but can be, and as as someone who. Like if you're like driving around and you're it's late night and you have no place else to go and there's not a restaurant anywhere nearby or you don't want White Castle, then that's the place to go. Like you would get that. So this there is there is no White Castle around. Cisco. Yeah, where you are. So this is like the the last plan in case you're yeah. hungry and there's nothing of yes, this. I agree. Other than this. Yeah, this is my like 
are is the things you see and you know there's nothing else around. Like for example, you're like there was there's a dead zone near us where there's no restaurants, but there's gas stations. So this is the choice. <laughs> like this is the this is it. If you're hungry. It's just trying to be convenient for you. That's that's nice. <laughs> He's still trying. Mm-hmm. Just do your best to avoid any gas station sushi. Just no. no. Yeah, I, I would kind of have to uh, agree with that. I idea. don't like sushi yeah. to begin with. <laughs> yeah, I love sushi, and you won't catch me anywhere near touching that. I, I, I will. Uh, I have an issue sometimes with just refrigerated foods at restaurants, at gas stations in general. <laughs> like unless it is something even then like I've, I've picked up a lunchable like at a gas station once or twice and been like okay that should be fine because at least i know it's it's, mo- it's all processed and pre-packaged but the i try to avoid the sandwiches unless they're heated up like if they're sitting there for you to heat up no nah. no well that's fair yeah all right so moving on uh this is where this all prompted from because producer jeff had made a comment previously that he thought that this was a question that should be asked and answered oh hey cub tony cubs is in the in the house uh, Yay! hey tony he's been a long time rollers are amazing when road tripping <laughs> true yeah. wait wait tripping <laughs> nice in other words when you're going on a road trip not correct i mean tripping on why not both why not hey uh, here's my feeling on it if you're high does it matter like is anyone getting hurt are you not are you not going to make yourself sick are you not going to die those those become the key questions i think at that point right so you're (laughs) Go ahead. Go ahead, David. No, I was going to say your question. So the 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 key question that prompted all of this, Jeff wanted to know. Um, I'm going to modify it because of our theme here. Is a big bite hot dog a sandwich? Yes. <laughs> Cisco yes, shaking his no. head no. <laughs> no, it's a hot dog. It's it's already in the name, even if it's big. Again, taxonomy, sandwich, hot dog. I say no. I don't think it's a sandwich. I think it's so weird to say it that way, but for as long as I've known hot dogs existed, it's always been hot dog or sandwich. Like it's always been, you don't say hot dog sandwich. You don't put, they don't, they don't synonymously go together. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I mean, that's not, no. that's not the question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. Then I will answer the question and say no. A hot dog is not a sandwich. <laughs> a hot dog is not a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Period. But, <laughs> but uh, like uh, uh, a soda slash pop slash Coke um, is a beverage. But you don't say, hey, I would like a beverage. I would like a Coke. That's because things have become like that is the, oh gosh, that's a longer conversation. Just a whole like. Yeah, that's more like a brand that you're asking but, for specifically. Because yeah. like, well, I've, no, never no, walked, like, I've never like, walked into like a restaurant. I'm using Coke in the, 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 the uh, deep south version of Coke. More of like, hey, I want a soda. I don't, it's, it's, I would like a soda. Instead of, I would like a beverage. You're saying the type of beverage you want. You're saying, I want a hot dog because you want a, a hot dog, which is a sandwich, but nobody uses the term sandwich referring to the hot dog. But taxonomized, it is a sandwich. <laughs> this is so funny. Sorry. You, it's, anyway, keep going. Just, I'm just reading some stuff and it's rather hilarious. It it is oh, it is it, in the family of sandwiches that po' boys are. 
Wait, you don't say you want look a like sandwich. sandwich. Not, you just say a pull, pull boy. Um, I'm I'm now. This is why it was going to be a debate. <laughs> it's a bread with some sort, sort of filling. How the bread is formed and and shaped. That's in the matter all together. Do you remember the Subway sandwiches of the past where they did the uh, 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 gouge cut? God, but those aren't those aren't sandwiches anymore. Didn't you hear? The cake. Yes. <laughs> and the tuna is not legally fish. they are cake because of the amount of sugar and something in the else. Bread. Yeah, the amount yep. of sugar in the bread. So you're using Subway as a sandwich type. It it is not anymore. It is not. <laughs> You've been lied to, Jeff. But it, it was still it was a submarine sandwich. But how they cut it was they dug a trench, right? Yes, they did this this top down V cut, and I remember that like years ago there was put one it in, in the, and in then the they put the yeah where I worked yeah. and I went over one day and I don't know why all of a sudden I was like what 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 are you Doing. like it was so weird <laughs> that they stopped doing the top cut and they just came in from the side and i was like i i you didn't no. like <laughs> what are you doing stop no <laughs> you were weird before we liked weird stop like being normal now <laughs> yeah plus it was the perfect method for the meatball yeah agree i agree with that yeah yeah like that, oh god, that's the thing I hate the most about like the subway and the meatball sandwich. It's like now that they do it and it's just like folded, like no, it, it's just gonna fall out of the side, like the other side. Like, like you realize you're putting liquid on bread and it is going to soak through. And unless again, and unless you toast the bread, it, it's just going, or even worse, when you toast the bread, it's going to make it just a mess. And and I'm gonna end up having to eat it with a fork, which that's not the purpose or the reason why I bought this Subway sandwich to begin with. It was because I wanted a sandwich that I could hold in my hand. I personally love wet Subway meatball sandwiches. Okay, that, that just kind of creeped me out, and I'm not really sure how I feel about that. That was a choice. <laughs> so, um, well, are we still debating? Well, like, I, this I, is why I'm saying that didn't sound like it was much of a debate. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, be, just because it, it, it's still meat that goes in bread of some type. So, right? Yeah. How is this different than than like a regular roast beef sandwich or something? I, I think the naming is the key issue for people. Like they they don't think of because they don't call it a hot dog sandwich. They just say that they're going to have a hot dog. No, they'll just call it a hot dog because you want. But specifically, what you want. But here's the thing: when there's little ones around, but when you're categorizing it, it's a sandwich. Right, but when there's little ones around, and I go to a family function and we're having hot dogs, they usually, when they're single digit age, like younger. And they get a hot dog. They just get a hot dog with some ketchup, probably, and like, and it's cut up for them, and that's how they eat it. Yeah, they don't have it with a bun. Right, right. Which so, means that when you put it into a bun, it is now a sandwich. The bunless, not, the bunless hot dog is just good for Adkins. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> The voice of now, now it's just di now we're just talking diets. And... <laughs> well, that's what I think is funny because, like Tony says so, in the live chat, it is a sandwich. It is not a meal unless you add a roller. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good callback. Um, no, but he goes on to say, "Is a burger a sandwich? Do you call it a sandwich or a burger?" It's a sandwich. Oh God. And I think that's what the because part of the thing is. part of the thing with sandwiches. I think of sandwiches is the square cut bread that you get in this, you know, in loaves. A, a sandwich bread. A sandwich bread, and you know what? Ninety nine percent of the time that I've had burgers that I've made at home, it's I've never bought hamburger buns for it. I usually use this bread. Yeah. So there's a a 
or I'll, I'll go to two things and they will, I'll put it like this. So there's a, an uh, image and it says, it's a hot dog a sandwich. It says, most Americans say no, but regional and age differences complicate things. So 39% said sandwich, 61% not a sandwich. When you split it by age, 67% of retirees say it's a sandwich, but 63% of students, meaning I'm assuming younger than, you know, like college age or what have you, not mm -hmm. a sandwich. And then it went state and it says in California, 45% say it's a sandwich and 55% say it's not a sandwich. But when you go to Illinois, 28% say it's a sandwich and 72% say it's not a sandwich. And there then- There's an entire five, five part series about, about is a hot dog a sandwich? Yeah. Done by the podcast, a hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> so, and then I'm going to read two things that will agree with Jeff. Even the language experts have issued a verdict. Merriam Webster came down definitively on the side of yes, a hot dog is a sandwich because, quote, the definition of sandwich is two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. That part. So, that one there. And then uh, in 2018, the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg concluded that a hot dog is indeed a sandwich while on the late show with Stephen Colbert. That same year, Frank Furter company Oscar Mayer told today, we're in the debate once and for all and declaring that yes, a hot dog is a sandwich. And that came out in March of 2023. So, all right, listen. They use the term sandwich when they're asking to have a hot dog. They're just not going to use it. That's okay. I'm just, I just, I'm just throwing all the evidence. There's nothing that. wrong with that. I appreciate you throwing the evidence out there. What I do not appreciate is that the like, God bless their soul, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the great RGB, like waded into this conversation. Like, I don't <laughs> think that's fair. Um, it was not a legitimate case brought before the Supreme Court. Like, I just yeah, using Stephen Colbert's show as a reference. Is not necessarily the best way to use for facts. Well, I mean, like the late show is Stephen Colbert. Sure. The Colbert <laughs> report, yeah, that gets a little more iffy. But in the end, oh gosh, hot dog, okay. the hot dog meal is a sandwich. The uh, sausage, for lack of a better term. Of a hot dog is a hot dog and it's not a sandwich. Yeah. It can be used in many ways. One of them is in a hot dog sandwich. Yeah. We just don't call it a hot dog sandwich. We, we, we just don't use the term hot dog sandwich. When so, to it. With the evidence presented before me, I will change my vote. Okay. To yes. Because, because I will never use hot dog sandwich. I'll remain. I will never say hot dog sandwich. sandwich. That's, that's perfectly hot fine. Dog. There's nothing wrong with that. But I will. I will, I will not say I would like a soda beverage. I will say I would like a soda. I used to say pop when I was a kid, but I was in Minnesota at the time. And that's why I'm the pedantic asshole and says soda pop. Just like it covers things, it Cover doesn't everything. cause issues. If you go to the salad, you have to say Coke soda pop, <laughs> and then cover all of your bases. And if they only serve Pepsi and you say I would like a Coke soda pop, oh. they will give you a Pepsi. Oh, <laughs> if you're in the South and they're serving Pepsi, you're probably not in the South. That's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I mean, there's, there's a there's reason why everybody called it a Coke. Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah. If you if you're in the if you're in the south and, and you say you want a coke and they give you a Pepsi, you walk out the door. No, you up. just you 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 slowly pay your bill <laughs> and quietly leave and never come back. I'll be damned. I'm never gonna ask for a starry again. By the way, fuck that noise. It's a Sierra Mist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad about that name change. It is the same damn drink. Oh, so it doesn't change anything? Like it's the same no. flavor, same. It thing? is the same, same goddamn thing. thing. They just changed the name because it wasn't selling good as Sierra Mist to Starry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, That's it's, why I order a Sprite. Yeah. <laughs>
All right. So our next question, boy, boy, this is the kind of relevant because this conversation got spicy. So 7-Eleven serves breakfast items and various foods all throughout the day. So a recent item they introduced is the mini spicy breakfast empanada. So the question is, again. it's a spicy mini breakfast empanada. <laughs> so I put the image up, sausage, egg, and cheese. It's a hot pocket, but okay. Croissant, it says, which this is from their website, and this is not me goofing. So it says it's a croissant, but it's not a croissant. No. Then when you read the description, it says our new mini spicy breakfast empanadas are made to perfection with sausage, egg, cheese, and peppers, a kick of spice to kickstart your day. So here's the question. Is this cultural appropriation? What What is this? No, this is called <laughs> American This is not nodding his head. I will. It, it's an American. If anyone says otherwise, Starbucks will charge you ten dollars for this in the airport. <laughs> Welcome to the United States, where we'll bastardize any of your national dishes. <laughs> I'm gonna hold, just. I just just hold this up for like twenty minutes. <laughs> I. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's a hot pocket. It's it's. Apparently, it's a croissant. It's a ravioli. No, it, it, th th there's nothing there's that resembles nothing, a croissant there. Nope. Like, it's, it's not flaky. The, the, the and, and there's no way flaky. that's flaky. To be yeah. blunt, like, that's kind of the same thing. Like, it's a cultural person. <laughs> it, it's, it's a version of a pizza roll. Oh. Yeah. I like that you saw Oh, so in other words, it is nothing but molten lava just Except waiting for the very center of it to where it's scar crazy. the inside of your mouth. That's, that's you obviously don't know how to how, how to eat pizza rolls. Yeah, I just I, I I won't lie. It sounds delicious. Like, don't get me wrong. Oh, period. if you go by I, just the if you go by just the description, it sounds yeah. great. I just I'm I just calling it an empanada feels out of place, but I guess they didn't want to call it like. A pocket oh, sandwich okay. or a hot pocket or mm -hmm. well, these meat. are mini, so they're probably about this big, like an inch or two. So yeah. they're probably much closer to to not not necessarily a hot pocket, which takes several bites. Yeah. This is something that's like bite size. Pop. Yeah. So so again, it's more like a pizza roll. It's a savory crustable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Yep. It's a good definition. Like it. It looks like a crustable, honestly. Yeah. I just. I'm... Well, the uncrustables still take a couple of bites. I think this is smaller. So mini crustable. I don't know. Uncrustable. It's hard to tell with this picture. I just. It just feel. I. 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 Again, I would eat this. I just. It just doesn't. I mean, it's just a version. Of, it's just a different version of their mini taco. My biggest issue is where is the spice at? Is it in the sausage? Is it in or they, it has like a little bit of red pepper. pepper? Yeah, it's in the red, red and yellow. Probably in the sausage. I see. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> red and green peppers. Those aren't spicy. <laughs> no, they're not. Red and green peppers. Like if I had to guess, the spice is probably in the sausage. I would assume so, unless unless they're lying again and like. Like, okay, so again, I'm looking at this picture and I'm seeing nothing but lies. Um, because I see darker green pieces in inside this thing, and I'm wondering if that's like the jalapeno that they're not saying that they have. Because I guess jalapeno, it's bell peppers. jalapeno is a pepper, but I mean, I think it's a bell jalapeno pepper. is a chili. Eye rolls, just whatever. <laughs> like, it just, it, it, no, I don't um, think. I don't think red or, or, or bell peppers are considered chilies. Or right. they're not. No, no. They're yeah, they're not. They're, they're not peppers, but but a, but a, a jalapeno is a chili. Yeah. Yeah, if they have jalapenos in there, that would be spice there. It would be spicier if there's actually jalapeno in there, which I, I would hope that they would tell you is in there, because you know maybe you're yeah. allergic to jalapeno. I don't think many people are, but it could be a possibility. Um. I mean, it. Mm. I mean, they I, don't say it's like hot spicy. No. Yeah. But it says a kick of spicy. You would assume it's spicy like that. 
Right. Yeah. It's, well, it's just a kick of spice. You're only going to lose one or two teeth, not a lot. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, on that trend, here's the next thing that like probably will be divisive. Um, and I'm going to apologize in advance to Cisco. <laughs> I should have done that for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. What about this? This is the no. maple flavored sausage no. egg and cheese taquito. I'm out. <laughs> out. You've heard about the breakfast burrito? That's kind of what a taquito is, except it's but, not closed on the end. Are they are they insinuating you're supposed to dip it in maple syrup? Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. No, it says because I, I is it. Let's see. Stuffed it, it inside a maple flavored tortilla. Huh. It's not a tortilla anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Sorry. Well, I guess if you fry it and put the I don't know. I'm I'm very confused. I'm trying to <laughs> it. again. It's Americans pasteurizing food, uh cultural foods. It doesn't it now doesn't... in in Mexico, this would resemble resemble a flauta, not the taquito is more of a more of a Texas thing, and mm -hmm. in Mexico, this would be more of a flauta. Yeah, there's no, flauta yeah, there's no flauta. Right. <laughs> flauta is easy to say, but people don't know what it is. That's the Cisco. I'm just gonna say this. I don't know how Latin people put up with us white Americans because we just fuck shit up left and right nonstop. We like I, take something and then we're like, oh, but and a little too spicy. So we like try to change it and then we're like, oh, but I don't want corn. I want wheat. Like and, and it just keeps like modifying and then it turns into this. Like and you're like, what is that? Like it looks like I don't, I'm not even gonna say it because we'll get banned too, but um now, as, as Damon was saying, I, I would try them and see if they're good. I was yeah. still pissed at the name, but I would try them. I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this and I kind of feel like I don't, I'm curious, but the, and I, I again, I, I hope and that you don't dip it. I feel like the, the maple, like, up there of syrup is just meant to be like, it's maple flavored. We have to show you that there's maple syrup here so that you understand that it's maple flavored. Um, I'm it, hoping that someone's going to sue if they don't I mean, have uh, the, the dip. Looking at the tortillas, though, those those are thick. They make those me are think, thick think tortillas. they're more, made more like pancakes. It's like this is their version yeah. of trying to, to compete with the McGriddle, which is impossible. Oh. So I agree with Jeff. I think that's intentionally part of like this strange aberration of what they've put together. Because I'm like, mm, okay, kind of looks like a, a kind of looks like a, a rolled up pancake that's sort of like a doobie, but apparently tastes better. I mean, I, <laughs> I, no, I guarantee you, none of them in the store look that way. No, not a part. single one it's, of them look that way. It's food photography. I mean, have you ever yeah. seen a Big Mac look like like a Big Mac that yeah that McDonald's yeah. But actually the, serves or has their new commercials when they do this? Is I don't. I'd try it. I I'd, I'd give it a try. I'd probably hate it. I'm just gonna own it. I mean, how uh, much is this? Is it like two bucks? Well, again, this seems to be Starbucks, so it's gonna be expensive for what it is. Yeah, if this is, <laughs> is this Starbucks. No, this is no, this is still 7-Eleven. This is all 7-Eleven. Oh, okay. So I'm, sure, I'm assuming this is all still like 7-Eleven, like food. So yes. I'm assuming it'll be oh. on the cheaper side, which is why I'm worried. Um, this, this comes directly from the website. I know I have it up. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think it's going to be good. I don't well, think also good. think of this. This is going to be coming off a roller. That part. That's the other reason. Yeah, why. that that would be yeah. like to me. Oh God! If you had taken these and told me what they were without using the word taquito, I would be like, "Oh, cool! This sounds really good." And maybe I would take them home and like put them in a toaster oven or a regular oven and just warm them up and then try them. I would probably like it because this situation, I would probably want the roller, the tortilla, 
mm-hmm. daily person air quotes, um, to be kind of crispy. Mm-hmm. So uh, what I'm hearing is if you bought them frozen, like at, you know, your GFS, uh, BJ, Sam's Club, whatever. ATV. You would, right. You would buy them in a box and you would take them home and put them in your toaster oven and you'd be kind of game for that. But mm-hmm. the fact that it's on a roller starts to make it a question. Yeah. It immediately comes less appetizing to me since I know I made the mistake of going to the website, right? They, they posted some new food and I... Please, please, Gary, for the love of God, bring up Korean barbecue taquito. Oh, this? Because <laughs> that's the next question, kids. <laughs> Speaking of bastardization, I'm... I already <laughs> said I'm out. <laughs> I didn't even finish the statement. That's how, how like it is. he feels about it. Look, man, Korean barbecue is trendy. You are correct in that statement. Does yes. not give not people a... license to make these things, though. This feels this feels wrong. Like I don't want to. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to say it. You know what? David withdraws his consent. That's where we've gone. Yeah. He's like, no, we're not. We're not doing that. Like this. This feels like dirty. Yeah. This doesn't feel right. This makes me feel sad. Like that's that's what this this is to me. Like it. It. It's a it's a flavor. It's flavors that to me, don't belong together. Oh. Like, that's my problem. I get why it's a thing, because as Jeff said, like, the Korean barbecue flavor is like this trendy, trendy flavor now. And that's all well and good. But this, no. Like, just, why can't you just, I mean, hate to say it, like, give me a, a not a roller, like a, like this taquito rolling. Just give me, like, a, a piece, like a Korean barbecue flavored, like, chicken finger or something like give me something along those lines or are realistically give me a fucking chicken tender and give me like korean barbecue sauce like like, like that would be fine with me i would be okay but when, with you, that. when you go to 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 a 7-eleven you think of taquitos so they got mm-hmm. to take the thing that that's trending and put in taquito i mean this will be a fad this will go away <laughs> And then we'll just make another one with whatever the current fad is. Well, I mean, it depends, Jeff. If they load it up with MSG and they, like, market it to the stoners, this shit could be around for years. I mean, it already is. <laughs> I was going to say, that, that has been the strategy. So, But, so, but I, I have a feeling definitely this is, this is definitely going to be a limited of time offering. Because even the stoners, they're just going to go back to their tried and true Monterey Jack and Chicken. Or uh, the steak and cheese. Yeah, no, that that's fair. I just, this this no. It's... So wait, we've got one more. Oh no! Yeah, I saw it too. <laughs> I know what you're going to. Well, we're going to change our food format, and this time we're going for balls, baby. Yeah. Okay, balls. The the glazy barbecue meatballs, limited time only. Oh God, no! The oh, I'm, I'm just gonna, are even it's, worse. It's dongo. It's what? It's meatball dongo. Excuse your mouth. What? What is dongo. that? Is that allowed D-O-N-G-O. on YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. <laughs> this is your language. Please saying. explain to me. What, what... <laughs> it's not our what? language either. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> So hilarious. So While Jeff's looking that up, Tony said in the chat, y'all realize I drive to Inferno next weekend and I'm going to have to try these on the way there now. I'll report back my findings. Thank you, Tony. Oh, please do. Um, yeah. do the God's work. Please, <laughs> Noah. The sacrificial lamb, yes. Is perfect for the stoners. Go ahead, go but, ahead. I mean, you could also call this a kebab, but... yeah. Dango is a Japanese dumpling made with rice flour mixed with urachi rice flour and, gl- and glutinous rice flour. It is different from the method of, of making mochi, which is made after, from steaming glutinous rice. Usually served as like three round balls on a skewer. 
Yeah. Oh. I, 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 so I, this yeah. is with Italian seasonings. It says Italian seasonings in the damn this description. Is, this, oh, wait, this, wait. Because it so does maybe say, it's more like a kebab. But <laughs> this is the thing. It says in the description, quote, Noda didn't make these, but dang, if they don't taste like she did. No, they don't. I doubt they do. I doubt they ever will. Ever, ever, <laughs> ever. First of all, since when is Nona going to make barbecue meatballs and shove them full of cheese and glaze them in barbecue sauce? Like, I'm just like, what? <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to figure out. This is at a 7-Eleven. Where the hell are they making these and how are they making these? They are, they are not making yeah, these. Are, this is microwave shit. This is this they're is, literally this is, this is, taking frozen meatballs that have been pre-made in the factory, uh, thawing them out, glazing them up, and, and heating them up. Yeah, this mama, this is garbage. Like, or, I just or, or it, it, they may even be pre-made. All they're really doing is pop is is popping them, them on a skewer and heating them this up. Is so bad. This is this 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 is this is this is insulting to meatballs and barbecue and cheese, everything, and Italian and and everything. Like this is just it. And again, I would have, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I would have been fine with this if they had taken the first sentence out. Like, why are we throwing it to Nana? No, Nana's not making this. She would never make this <laughs> ever. <laughs> We've had. Bar you like a, a potluck staple is barbecue meatballs. That we've known that for a while. It's fine. If you would just pep it that we're gonna have bar cheesy barbecue or glazed cheesy barbecue meatballs and be like these are you know meatballs that are covered in added cheese and covered in barbecue sauce, I would have been fine with it. But the fact that you insulted Anana to make this statement, <laughs> I'm out. Mm. And then like Putting it on a skewer like a, not, like anyone would serve meatballs on a skewer like that. Like, well, when you think of where you're getting these, you need to conveniently, you know, take them. It's not like they've got tables or anything. This is on the go. True. So what better way to put it together and keep it organized than put them on a skewer? I guess. So I think it's a great idea. You know, you use toothpicks when you have the meatballs at the parties, the barbecue meatballs. Five. Same thing. Meatballs. Except this time, there's like five of them on a skewer. So I'm guessing they're probably like half ounce size. Yeah, they're a little bitty. Yeah, they're they're not necessarily that large. Um, yeah. And besides, if they come like this, which they won't, but if they came like this with a wood skewer, it's got a pointy end. So you've got a weapon. You can kill Bill with this shit. Like after <laughs> you're done eating the meatballs. I mean, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I might. I might have. I don't. Mm. I mean, you're already taking a risk of, of uh, eating any hot foods from a convenience store. True. I'm not gonna say just Seven Eleven. This is for anyone. I mean, fact. So, I don't know. This is. This seems actually pretty tame. <laughs> Tony says, make it a sandwich to barbecue meatballs and a hot dog bun. Oh, <laughs> good callback. There you go. Shady. <laughs> Shady. I... Here's my question. Can, if you go there in your stone, will they let you put a sausage in the hot dog bun and then put the meatballs with it? Yeah, you'd probably have to pay for both, but well, right, but you know, but yeah, they, you can have your like you bought it, you do what you want with it. <laughs> Wait, at this at this point, are we are we actually questioning that sanity stays in the bun? Uh, but I believe they they would be willing to just sell you sell you the bun. So if you put meatballs in a hot dog bun, does that make it an open face sandwich? It makes it a sub. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I I Hi, the, just still let's I, 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 I just keep going back to these meatballs because it's got barbecue sauce on it and it's got Italian seasoning in it and cheese and there's just so many things that are not supposed to mix together. I think that worked perfectly. I don't mind. Don't call it that. 
<laughs> call it a meatball amalgamation or something like that. Don't they call it that. <laughs> season, I think if you made them like, don't say Italian season, just say seasoned meatballs. Like that's fine because we we know you can have a seasoned meatball. And, and then you can anything. still use the Italian seasoning, and no one would know what. Yeah, right, right. Just say seasoned meatballs. I mean, like, like I said, my biggest issue was they insulted Anana. Like, 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 why are we? Why are we calling like these aren't Italian? An Italian grandmother would never make this shit ever. Um, well, she, in any maybe case, she made the meatballs. Meatball. Seasoned. If you don't season your meatballs, some things. Are yeah, right. that part. True. Well, no, and, and that's totally fair. I mean, I, I feel they felt they needed to like tap into some culinary culture. So, I mean, the the yeah, I totally agree. Like the bastardization of the Italian concept is a bad thing. They also could have gone in a whole different direction, a bit like you know, like your Aunt Mabel used to make, and it'd be like, who the fuck has an Aunt Mabel anymore? You know, like, <laughs> but now to be fair, despite the description on the website. The actual name is glazed cheesy barbecue meatballs. They don't say anything about it being Italian or anything like that. They just say glazed cheesy barbecue meatballs. That's it. I, I think the Fair. fact that we went we went and read the description is where the problem comes down. Because yeah. I'm insulted by the description. <laughs> now I'm wondering what the descriptions are and some of these other things. Well, I mean, literally nachos is just the chips are your canvas with endless topping options. That's it. Well, I mean, it's true, but I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, let's go back to this. Who's really reading the descriptions? I mean, exactly. Exactly. I mean, fair. That's that's the tea. Like, are you really hey, looking at the description? Good. I mean, are you? I mean, that that's oh. really what I'm thinking. Because when I walk, when I waddle up to this, and I'm hungry, you don't say waddle. Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna own it. I don't walk in a straight line like I used to. I've got birth steps, and it's so. The reality is, I'm gonna come up to this, and I'm not reading descriptions other than what it says that it is to know whether or not I'm interested. But they You're are gonna doing accidentally this. get one of these Korean barbecues. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least they say it's Korean barbecue taquito. Yeah. They're going to have the label of what it is. They're not going to have the description of what it is, but that's, you know, fair. that's still that's part fair. of the label. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. I think, again, I agree with, I agree with Gary. If I had, if I hadn't read the, if you hadn't given me the stupid fucking description of the, the, yeah, the blade barbecue so cheesy meatball things, I would have been like, okay, cool. Like that sounds good. If you had just said like lace, barbecue, cheesy meatballs, or whatever it said, I would be like, oh, okay, cool. That might sound good. It's different. You eat it, and then you'll notice, oh, this is a this has Italian seasonings in it. I, <laughs> and you're gonna be but, like, this is yummy because they're meatballs. Because I don't know about you, most meatballs be, that are made have Italian seasonings. Let's be honest, Jeff. Are you really gonna taste the Italian seasoning in this meatball? Like let, I mean, let's you're be honest. You're not going to necessarily notice. You're just going to think it tastes like meatball. Yeah, you're probably going to taste the <laughs> barbecue glaze first like before anything else, and more yeah. than likely, the barbecue is probably going to overpower the Italian seasoning. Yeah. Like depending well, the on the cheese in it is going to overpower the. And, and how greasy is that? How how flavorful do you think the cheese actually is in here? I think it can make it disgusting, though. Yeah, that's the part. Because it again, well, it, it I'm it, sure they're using uh, processed cheese products. It's probably American. Of cheese. course, they are. I mean, like, it I'm said it was it. cheddar cheese, but that did not look like cheddar cheese. Oh, it I looked know. like I know. Yeah. It, it looked not like cheese. it looked like cube Velveeta. Look, um, it's American cheese that was made from cheddar. <laughs> In fact, that's what American cheese is made from. So. Tony said in the live chat, at the roller tray, the only thing I'm reading is the don't eat past here, which are the raw items. That I read. <laughs> so he's fair. just looking for the little signs that say, like, behind here still cooking. Everything in front of it is fair game. Right. I, I think I think Tony and I are two of a kind when it comes to, to, to the roller flutes. I'm, like, A-OK. -okay. I'm not expecting 
good food. I'm just expecting something that I'm going to enjoy the taste of. Well, and I do. And and you might, you might, you might not, depending on because it is a essentially a convenience. I mean, store yes. Product. Although, like, good again. There's some there's some great convenience store food products. Like, well, that's, mm-hmm. that's, we know that. Let's, Especially the prepackaged stuff. Like, yeah. like I go in and I. I used to go in and when thanks Tony for hearty me. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I go in and let's say I'm just I just want some mini donuts. So I go go over to the mini donuts and I, I see they have hostess donuts, but they also have the seven eleven donuts. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take the seven eleven ones and you know what? They the same wouldn't be surprised if they're made at the same place. Probably. We could sit here. Yeah. That that's a larger, longer, like oh yeah, that's definitely a longer conversation. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, but yeah, the the I still say that was anyway. I don't know. I so probably what, know. what we heard is that some of us have to be like in, in a different uh chemically altered state to enjoy these foods and some of us really have to be altered <laughs> and some are just perfectly fine going in totally sober and shoving any sometimes things i just them. crave it yeah that's fair that's fair i will yeah because now yeah. i kind of want taquitos like <laughs> <laughs> well that's okay lloyd in the live chat just said worse. i'm hungry now and i'm like sorry lloyd <laughs> you can order delivery from 7-eleven just saying oh my god they literally have it on their page order seven oh now god. delivery i don't even think i can only food. imagine how expensive that is. it's got to be uh uber eats grubhub or doordash i'm thinking i don't think so yeah um let me see if I click through what it's going to take me to. I'm curious now. Sevennow.com. Interesting. Well, it this might be. It might they might be still like having you sign into like seven rewards to log in. Flaming hot snacks. You get deals. <sighs> Hagen Dawes ice cream. Ben and Jerry's pints. You can get full size pizzas, hard alcohol seltzers, boneless wings. Uh-huh. This is this is right up a stoner's alley. I'm telling you, like uh-huh. they are. I don't they even are have com- to leave the house. They are competing hard with Jack in the Box right here. Like I'm just, <laughs> I'm just gonna call it. Yeah, but it's convenience store stuff, so it's not necessarily the munching meals. It's gonna be like oh, I could really go through for some Cheetos, dude. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. Let's order from 7 Eleven. Wow. Probably get it faster than if you use Instacart to get it from the grocery store. I love Lloyd's comment here. Having been to America, I think people have different opinions of what, quote, tastes good. Fact. Um, yep. Someone somewhere absolutely loves cheese, slurpy cheesecake. Good for them. <laughs> it's, it's cheesecake slurpee because the slurpee cheesecake is something different i was that's just reading it, it as, as, like I reading it as I'm, I'm not gonna make that distinction <laughs> oh my goodness gracious oh my face hurts mm-hmm. oh, i haven't <laughs> i don't think i've smiled or laughed this much in, in quite a while um Speaking of Slurpees, I'm just curious. I'm like doing a quick run through on those 300 flavors. I'm seeing if there's anything that like really kind of stands out because I think a lot of these are going to be pretty um, standard. Oh, okay, apple black currant. Mm-hmm. That sounds different. A black pina colada. So I'm going to need some more clarification. Yeah, on black pina colada. I, 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 need, I need more information to whether or not I to know if it's racist or not. So. <laughs> that, I, strangely enough, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> you have pictures, Gary. Man, what's the difference between a black person's pina colada and a white person's pina colada? I, I just don't, I don't think that's what they were meaning. I was I don't think that's what they were meaning like, either, but. 
I need clarification to be sure. I need, I need, Does I it need talk about clarify. Nana in the description because if so, then we've got problems. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, hey, so here's the wild thing while I'm trying to find the answer to this. Did you know that Funko Pops has a pina colada slurpee toy, like figurine? I didn't know that. I am <laughs> not surprised. I knew they had a slurpee. Has I know it was that on. specific. I'm finding a lot of stuff about pina colada, but not black pina colada. Maybe there's a reason that it's not available <laughs> because it just didn't work out as planned. I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know. I can't. I, it doesn't. It's not working. I'm like, I need. Mm. I need. I need more information. <laughs> we can't just leave that out there. <laughs> I'm trying. Here's, here's the Slurpee uh, Funko. In the meantime, oh, nightmare huh. figure, cool. That's cute. It is a cute little vinyl figure, you know. Hi. I, but yeah, I'm not sure about this. Mind you, this list is from 2015, so maybe it existed in a time before anybody documented it. And maybe, you know. maybe it's because the flavor is a little bit. Like if black black pina colada is actually the dark rum version versus the white. That's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. I don't know. And 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 searching on Google is not helping. No, I'm just getting pina colada recipes. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, my first one said said like with dark rum. So. Oh, all right, so here we go for some folks from the South. They had a cheer wine flavored Slurpee at one time. Oh, God. So for those that don't know, cheer wine happens to be a uh, unique Southern soda since 1917. And it's con considered to be cherry flavored. Originally from the <laughs> Carolinas, I believe. Meaning no one knows, but the closest thing that people can guess is cherry. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe. Apparently, there was a crush apple nectarine pear flavored Slurpee at one time. That's a lot of things. Yeah. Mm. So fruit salad one, okay. <laughs> A Diet Coke Frost Cherry. Mm. So it kind of sounds like they're trying to do cherry Coke in essence. Well, I mean, Slurpees, most of them are like soda of or pop related. The ones I've seen at least. Mm. True. Uh, there was something called a Full Throttle Blue Demon Slurpee. Now, what I didn't realize is that full throttle apparently is an energy drink. Yeah, it is an energy drink. So it's just a flavor of energy drink that yeah. Oh, okay. That's better. Oh, that's too funny. Because I was like, what in the hell is a blue demon at full throttle? I was like, wait, this, this is based on a Mexican Lucha Libre person. What? I, if you if you Google, you should find a picture of a Mexican luchador. Blue Demon was was a luchador from the I want to say sixties and seventies in Mexico, oh. and it looks like it it's based on that character. Interesting. I, hey, if, if that's acceptable, question mark, by, the, by, by, you know, the, the community, then so be it. I'm like, all right, this one, I have no idea what this is. What the heck is a gully washer? That's technically the flavor of Slurpee that used to exist at one time. 
because a gully washer by definition is a heavy rainstorm. I don't know what on earth would possess them. Are they are they mixing candle flavors with their priests? Or, I mean... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, this goes back to like 1970. That's wild. Let me show you guys this because there's been a, there's actually on eBay a pin that you can buy. Hang on, let me share this. This is kind of wild to me. And it says, I slurped a gully washer. I don't... So what you missed, Damon, was we were talking, I was still reading through those 300 like flavors, and there's this thing called a gully washer. And I was like, what the heck is that? <sighs> but it existed in 1970. Apparently, they made a pin. You could be proud of the fact that you drank a gully washer Slurpee. Which gully washer means an intense but usually short-lived rainstorm. I just <laughs> I have no idea. It's a water. Yeah. It's a water slurpee. Yeah. Um, if you're in the seventies, it meant something else. So in wait 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 hold on. This is in two thousand and five. There's a article that talks about 7-Eleven's famous Slurpee is celebrating its 40th anniversary. And in honor of the occasion, they were bringing back retro cups and flavors at participating stores. And in Metro Detroit, they apparently reintroduced the retro flavor for the month of July, the gully washer. Hmm. And they do not describe the flavor. <laughs> of course not. No, why would they? Because that would be the point. <laughs> Oh, but interesting. Slurpees are served at 28 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. It's Just below freezing. Yeah. Hmm. Man, the, the places we have gone today. <laughs> In a roller coaster. Yes, definitely. A roller. Oh, God. Let's go. Oh. You did. You did. Oh, my God. You did. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> the slow roll on that one. Oh, thank, thank quite you. Good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yay. I appreciate that one so much. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Just for you, Jeff. Just for you. Oh my goodness gracious. So um that's the journey of uh the 711. Now uh in case folks hadn't figured it out or paid attention, this happens to be the 11th show or 11th year that we've um recognized Jeff's birthday. Hence the theme that came about because yeah, that's that's how to kind of how that came about last year was the decade of debaucherous happy birthday hours. So I have to think of something for next year, having to do it well. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, it's up to you, Jeff, if you would like to share uh, what your plans are for your upcoming. <laughs> for my birthday? Yeah, uh, day of celebration. Probably playing Final Fantasy all day. I mean, all right. Basically, my my celebrating has been happening over this weekend because I had had this today, and yesterday I had a D and D game which lasted from noon to about seven thirty. Wow, no fun. But we had a we had a break in the middle. Well, good still. Nice. So, otherwise, it's a staycation for me because um, I don't really need feel like going anywhere so and what better place to be than home playing video games right very true very true hey as long as it's a good day and you enjoy it i mean that's yeah. what it comes down to and you're not outside where it's flaming hot yes 
Exactly. It's only 100 degrees right now at uh, 23 p.m. Yep. It was a high of 107. Yeah, that was most of this week for here, us here in St. Louis. So. Yeah. Today has been the coolest day it's been for a couple of weeks here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lloyd says in the live chat, woo, Final Fantasy XIV, let's go. There was, there was a lot of those. The patch is until <laughs> October. Well, plenty of time to play it. So if anything happens, like I saw before, anytime there's a new release, uh, it appears that the servers get backlogged and there is much frustration and pissing and moaning about on the internet because people have to wait because they are now the 7,186th in line to get into the game or something. <laughs> I have plenty of those queues at the launch of Endwalker, but uh, Dawn Trail doesn't launch until next summer, so... I was going to say, it only usually happens with the big releases, right? It, yeah, it's pretty much the expansions. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, Hopefully they that still haven't figured out what, why, uh, how, to, how to do it like Blizzard does, where you know, you're only like the 125th on EQ versus the thousand, thousand, thousands. You, you just alienate women and everyone else from from being a part of the game. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta have our uh, uh sexy bunny girls oh anyway <laughs> nice well with that jeff is there anything else as we wrap up uh in celebrating your birthday no you would... i'm good <laughs> you want to do the outro <laughs> um, I can. Give me a second to get ready for that. So, uh, first of all, we want to thank our guests for joining us. Thank you, Cisco and Charles, for, for joining today. And hey. those that were in hey. uh, live chat who joined in as well, um, Tony, Lloyd, uh, I know Gray commented at one point along the way um, as well. So we very much appreciate it. For those of you that um, are just tuning in, there's lots of ways you can get in touch with us here at Cubs Out Loud. You can go to our website. Com. You can also shoot us an email, comes out loud at gmail. You could even leave us a voicemail message. You could even sing happy birthday to Jeff. Even Marilyn Monroe sex. And you do that by calling 361 CML Talk. That's 361 265 8255. And pretty much you can find us anywhere there, that uh, there is a social media landscape to find us. Just type in comes out loud as one word. Uh, and if you want to join our social chat over on Telegram, you go to bit.ly backslash telegram hyphen col. We have a calendar uh, that when we go live with these shows, so you can check that out. It's bit.ly backslash calendar hyphen col. And if you want to support us, there's lots of ways to do that. You can, first of all, buy some shit. I mean, great stuff that is made and available at zazzle.com. Um, as you can see, we're all like repping our stuff from the shirts that we wear uh, to the mugs and hats and all sorts of uh, accoutrement, as Jeff likes to say, that you can get there. Several of the designs uh, were made by uh, Smashy. You can visit his uh, store over at Tee Public. That's T E E public.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. Uh, he has been a great supporter of ours over the years and made some of our awesome. designs. Smashy He's is awesome. He is. Um, you can also become a patron, as some of our lovely folks who joined us today have. You can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, and for a dollar or more a month, you can help support and keep the lights on, as we like to say. Or if you want to make a one-time donation, you can just send us a tip by going to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Pretty much anywhere that you get your podcast, you can get our podcast feeds. Just put in Cubs Out Loud. It should be on uh, Apple, Google Play, Spotify, all those. And if you don't see us on there, let us know. We'll see what we can do. And with that, uh, I'll start with our guests first. Dr. Cisco, if anybody would like to get in touch with you, where would they find you in the socials? I uh, think I'm pretty hidden in the socials. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> so if you find them. <laughs> if you, hmm. That's going to be a big surprise, and you can just send me a message. <laughs> so now everybody's desperately looking for the alt Twitter. Anyways. Uh, 
<laughs> of that hidden. That's all right. Charles, what about you? Um, you can find me pretty much everywhere as Chuck AW1977, uh, except for here on YouTube. Occasionally I post videos on here as well as Chuck AW. Nice. Uh, Damon? If you would get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. On most favorite lighted sites are on Facebook. Or find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. <laughs> nice. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear 73. Um, I do have several different, uh, you know, kind of things that I go by on there. So if you're stalking me, send me a message. Like, don't be a creeper because that's just gross. And I'm probably not going to reply or know who the hell you are. Just saying, you know, one of those things. And to the birthday boy, Jeff, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box set, box puppy, box cut, box sub zero other. Just don't expect me to be posting shit because that basically ignores social media nowadays. But eh, I'm there. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> Nice. So with that, we want to thank everybody for joining us here at Cubs Out Loud. Number 708. Happy birthday, Jeff. Hope you enjoyed it. The 7-Eleven edition. Uh, and we will be back next week. Um, and with that, uh, we're going to say goodbye. And there's going to be no outro music because this is weird for me to try to produce live. Take it out, everybody! Good night, everybody! Adios! Oh God! We're going to need to do that again so we can get a clean yeah. tape. <laughs> <laughs>